So you'll often see me post trading results. And um, you can see from those results uh, what I've done perhaps in an individual race or perhaps over a trading session. But from those results, you can see that I did really well at Cheltenham. You can see that I banged in a great result at the Grand National. And that continued into the summer when we came around to the Derby. Now, posting trading results sometimes can be considered a little bit controversial. But what I wanted to do was to do a video to explain to you why I post some of my trading results. If you're interested in learning to trade on Betfair, then visit the Bet Angel Academy, where you have detailed, structured Betfair trading courses. Or why not visit our website where you can download a free trial of Bet Angel Professional, but also visit the forum where you can get detailed images, examples, and downloadable files. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon if you want notification of new videos as they're released. So if you've followed me for any time on social media, you'll know, and on the videos as well, incidentally, um, that I do regularly show you results that I've got um, from individual races or over individual days and whatever. And um, the reason that I do that is quite simple, really. It's, it's not to fluff up my ego or anything. It's to basically show you that I've got skin in the game. That's the most important thing for me. Um, I would quite happily not post any at all, to be honest, but I think that I should do because I want you to know that you know if you're using my product and you're risking your money that I'm happy to do that as well um, and therefore when I post results that's generally what I'm doing I'm sort of saying to you hey you know I'm still here I'm still working hard I'm still throwing my energy into the market and getting decent results out of it using the same product that you are and that's always been important to me um, I think it would be living a bit of a lie if I was just sat here um, answering support queries or messing around with spreadsheets and not actually doing that. So that's what drives the product forward. It's important for me to use the product and therefore, you know, you would expect me to use it to a high level. Um, and, you know, obviously the results that I get are sort of exceptional now and again, but I try and contrast that as many times as I can with the reality of it. So you'll very often see me post up a big result and then immediately post up something that's happened immediately afterwards. So with the Derby, I posted up a fantastic result, but then I tweeted and sort of said, you know, while getting a big result out of these races is fantastic, this is the reality of trading. So I'm trying to contrast the two there for you. But also you would expect me to get bigger results from bigger races. So if I can get 50 quid out of a race that's turning over half a million, um, I should be able to get 500 out of a race turning over 5 million. And that's more or less what you see most of the time is that there's this, this scalability depending upon what's going on. You know, it would be a surprise to get a grand out of a, a much smaller race, though it is possible, but it's more likely I'm going to get a much smaller result. And on average, I will get a smaller result. But on average, at big races, I will get a bigger result. But predominantly, my motivation for doing it is to show you that I've got skin in the game, that I'm actively trading, that, um, you know, what you're doing is the same as what I'm doing. And it's important for me to show you that I'm actively doing it because it's an unfortunate fact. But, you know, a lot of the people in the industry are here to sell your product. They're not here to teach you how to trade. Now, they are there to teach you how to trade, but at quite a basic level. They're not, you know, they're over merchandising their ability. And as a consequence, um, that is misleading. But it's sort of to be expected. So when I was trading in financial markets, I remember somebody saying to me, you know, the brokers, the middlemen, the, all of these other things around there, they're not there to make money for you. They're there to make money from you. And I think that that's very apt and something that you tend to see in a lot of industries that are related to, uh, you know, attempting to make money of some sort. It used to happen in the old days with tipsters um, but, and, and it happens now with trading. But people are there to try and get money out of you based upon the trading opportunity. But in fact, if you were to force people to publish all of their records, you'd find that very few of them actually did it themselves. It's an unfortunate fact, but that is the essence of a lot of what you see that's going on. So, um, yeah, I feel it's always compelled to, to show you that I'm still active. You know, there will be a come a time when I slightly do slightly less. Um, but that, you know, I'll talk to you about that at that appropriate moment. Um, but... As time has gone on, I thought that I wouldn't last five years. And then when I went through 10 years, I was thinking, well, isn't this marvelous? And I'm about to go through year 20 and I can still do it. So I want to show you that that is still possible. And that, you know, that is all part of, of the experience that you get, is that we're sat here um, risking money the same way that you are and doing the best that we can. And that's what helps push the product on.
However, you know, I'm aware that um, some people um, could actually, you know, fake imagery to make themselves look really nice. And there was an issue on Twitter recently, I forget the Twitter handle that it was, and it's gone now anyway, but somebody was banging in massive, massive totals, and uh, somebody spotted an error on one of the screenshots and queried it with the, the person, and suddenly the Twitter account was gone. So you have to have a little bit of scepticism with you in terms of whether some of these things um, are true or not. And as you know, you know, it is possible to fake uh, imagery, you get Photoshop, change a few things around, and away you go from there. But, you know, one of the things I've committed to over a number of years is to not exaggerate anything uh, that I've done. And in fact, I don't um, post up my biggest results. I never post up my biggest individual result, biggest day, uh, biggest month or year. And that is because uh, those sort of things tend to be outliers. They tend to be things that happen not very frequently, produce outsized returns, and aren't realistic. Whereas if you look at my Derby results, that's something that you could have done because I was just taking the same strategy I would have got to get 50 quid out of a small race. I just did it with a larger amount of money. But even then, the amount of money that I was using wasn't that big anyway. So there was a great little video I did called How to Be a Millionaire Trader, and it explains to you how I can achieve some astonishing turnover figures um, over the course of a day, and how you can too, if you're willing to, to follow the same sort of strategy. But basically, you can um, get decent results out of the market, even with a relatively small bank. That's one of the great advantages of this particular trading market. In financial markets, the more money you've got, the more weight you carry. In sports markets, they're sort of quite democratic, really. They don't tend to suffer from the same sort of problem. Um, they're, they're pretty equitable. And in fact, the more money you have, the harder it is to actively trade. It's probably worth me doing a video at some point on trading hedge funds because I've always been very, very negative on those. There's a great little blog post you can read as to why I'm negative on sports hedge funds. But the essence of it is, is that somebody sat at their bedroom at home can turn over vast amounts of money and they don't need to raise money to invest into a fund to trade. Uh, in fact, the more money you have, the worse that it gets. And therefore, there is no need for these hedge funds to exist. And one by one by one, they've lost millions and millions and millions for people who've invested in them, and still nothing changes. There's two or three that have popped up recently, and you know every time I see another one pop up, you know I, I don't want it to exist. I don't want anybody to put any money into it because it's just wrong. And I've tried to speak to journalists, but journalists seem to be a little bit lazy, and they run a story on a hedge fund that's just started, and I phone them up, speak to them, and say, you know. Why are you promoting this when it quite clearly cannot work? And they sort of go, oh, thanks for your opinion. And then, you know, two years later, when it's all gone tits up, they will phone me and say, how did you know? And it's like, I told you why it wouldn't work. One recently uh, liquidated back end of last year, I think, and they lost something like 13 million of investors' money. It was never going to work from day one. And I tried to tell people why, and everybody ignored it. But I think that's part of the reason, you know, when I post an image, I'm really keen to let you know that um, I am still actively doing it. Some people just don't post anything at all. So how are you supposed to know if they are active or not? And I think that if I posted an image that I had faked, exaggerated, or misrepresented in some way, that would be the end of it for me. Um, I can't post something up that never happened. And if I did do that and I was found out, then everything would get blown apart. All 20 years worth of work would go straight down the toilet. And my intention is that when I finally stop doing this, like, I, I mean, I can't actually see specifically when I will never trade again because there are so many opportunities all of the time. Um, but when I do stop sort of trading as aggressively as I do now in terms of the amount of effort that I'm putting into it, um, then I'm looking forward to writing the book and talking about some of the funny things that have happened, uh, some of the characters that I've met, some of the weird things that I've experienced, um, and how all of this went. I think it's going to be a really interesting story. But I can only really do that when I've sort of semi-finished, as it were, um, because I wouldn't want to um, talk about any of, of, of some of the characters um, without their permission um, or without sort of, you know, cross-checking and, and being able to write a decent story. While I'm still actively have skin in the game, I don't really have the time. And um, also I have to think about some of the other people that are in there that may be affected by stuff that I say. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that particular moment in time. And that's what I want to do uh, when the time is appropriate. And 
you know, I think I could destroy all of that if I decided to just bend the rules slightly or perhaps modify a screenshot or exaggerate some aspect of what I do. But I can tell you honestly and truthfully, everything you see is completely genuine um, and I try and represent it as such. But also, when I speak to these journalists at newspapers, they sort of say, well, on what basis do you say that this is going to fail? And it's like, because I'm doing it. I'm here doing it. I can tell you why this is wrong. Um, and they say, well, and very often they'll say, well, can you give me some evidence of that? And I have done that. I think I'm probably the only person that's ever proved uh, what I've actually done over a large period of, of time. And I realise that I'm unusual, but I'm not trying to get you to replicate what I'm doing. I'm not trying to say to you, you could get a grand from the derby. You probably could, but it's going to take you years to get there. It's an incremental process. You start with small stakes and you gradually build up your bank and your confidence and your ability. And then you get more and more confident. And when you see an opportunity, you can smash it. But you can't go from using £10 stakes to using £1,000 stakes and expect to achieve the same level of result. I'm not trying to get you to do that. I'm just trying to show you that I'm active and in the market when a lot of people are not, or are quite clearly not, active and in the market. I can see it a mile off. I don't expect you to be able to spot them. But nonetheless, you know, it's fairly obvious to me that there are lots of people out there that aren't actively trading that are positioning themselves as experts. You tend to find they're like it's like a U-shape. So some people post incredibly regularly um, and, you know, try and show their prowess that way. But if you see somebody that's posting incredibly regularly and they never seem to have any losses, you've got to ask them where those losses are. You have to start asking questions on it. Because trading, as I've discussed in, in videos, if you haven't seen the video, The Secret of Profitable Betting and Trading, it explains beautifully in there. But it's all about a balance of profits and losses. So I tend to win more frequently than I lose. But um, I, you know, I've carefully refined that over a period of time. But I do have losses, and I will happily talk about those. And you'll often see me moaning when I'm having a bad day. Uh, but at the other end of the scale, you've got people that never post at all. So what are you supposed to infer from that? Is the fact that they never ever post a PNL, or perhaps they did post some a few years ago, but haven't posted for three or four years? What is that supposed to say to you? Does that mean that they're a really good trader and therefore they don't post? You know, it's very hard when you get a decent result. Um, to not get really excited about it. There's a great video, I don't know if I'll be able to find it, of me uh, recording my reaction to one of my biggest ever wins. And, um, you know, it would be quite funny to, if I can dig that out and show you my reaction, because you do get a huge buzz when you, when you pull off a decent result, especially in a difficult market. So I think, you know, not posting anything is just as bad as posting too much. And in fact, you probably need to sit somewhere in between the two. But yeah, I think that, you know, I can understand why some people like the screenshots, why some people are sceptical. Um, whenever I post anything, I try and give you some balance. You've got to expect me that I'm going to be trading at a high level because I've been going for so long. Um, could you do exactly the same result? Technically you could, but there are a number of facets within there. You need to have the confidence to risk decent amounts of money. You need to be able to have the confidence to trade it at that level. Um, and you know all of those sort of things. So I'm not saying to you, oh, you know, buy Bet Angel and you can get a thousand pound out of a race. I'm just saying to you, I'm still here. I'm still active. I'm still trading and trying to do the best that I can and push the very boundaries of what is possible. Um, and that means that you should have confidence that it is still possible, that you can do it. Maybe not on the same scale, but that, you know, it is achievable, certainly anyway. But, you know, I know people's views are, are varied on this. Maybe what you can do is comment below and you'll give me your views on whether you think screenshots are motivational um, or offer any level of proof or whether you think they're a negative um, or whether you think people should pursue them and what do you think should happen to people who say that they're traders but but aren't um, when people post up images um, I can very often reverse engineer I keep data on football cricket tennis and racing and if somebody posts up an image I can pretty much quickly validate if it's a genuine image or not that's one of the ways I can tell if somebody's active or not and exactly what they're doing so, you know, you have to uh, be aware that any image that's out there, um, you can extract that information from. That's very often why I'll truncate an image, uh, because I don't want to give away too much, to be honest. It's my livelihood. So, yeah, let me know. Do you want screenshots? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Um, do you think it's a positive? Uh, I would be interested to understand what your opinion on, because I tend to post them just to show that I'm active. Um, and that's my intention to continue to do that for a period of time. But maybe I'm wrong. Let me know below in the comments.